What is a cast and what is cast neuropathy? And what on earth is tan horse foam protein? from Reno Tutorials and today we're going to be diving into cast and cast nephropathy. Let's do this. Now what is a cast? A cast is just a cylindrical structure which is formed in the distal tubules and collecting ducts and so it essentially takes on the shape of the distal tubules and collecting ducts. Now there are different types of casts which I'll discuss shortly but all of these casts have one thing in common and that thing is TAM horsefall protein otherwise known as uromodulin. But just for fun I'll be referring to TAM horsefall protein as just TAM. So TAM is a protein that is made uniquely in the kidney. If you don't have kidneys, you don't have any TAM. He's produced continuously in the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, and he's lost continuously in our urine. And TAM is a healthy protein to have in the urine. He's supposed to be there. And the more healthy nephrons you have, the more TAM that you'll produce. But what does TAM actually do? The short answer is we're not 100% sure, but on the basis of mostly animal studies, we think he might be involved in a few things such as regulating ion channels, affecting the permeability of the loop of Henle. We also think that he may have an important role in preventing urinary tract infections. So TAM actually binds to fimbriated E. coli and prevents these E. coli from attaching to our urothelium. And there are some other theories that TAM may also have an immune modulatory effect, as well as a role in preventing renal stones. So TAM is a protein that we find in the urine of healthy people, but he also forms the matrix of all urinary casts that can be seen on light microscopy. So a cast is just TAM plus anything that TAM has dragged along with him from the upper urinary tract into the urine. And these other things that he drags along provide clues as to what pathologies may be lurking within the kidney. Now let's take a look at some of these casts and what they mean. First up is hyaline casts. Now these are just TAM, all by himself. So hyaline casts can be seen in healthy people, but they tend to occur in states of dehydration. Red cell casts may indicate glomerular hematuria or glomerulonephritis. Hemoglobin cast can happen either because you had a red cell cast that is broken down or due to intravascular hemolysis where you have free hemoglobin in the blood. Myoglobin cast can be seen in rhabdomyolysis. White cell cast can occur in pyelonephritis or interstitial nephritis and rarely this is seen with glomerulonephritis. Granular casts are a mixed bag. They can either be derived from serum proteins or from cellular debris. So if you had a white cell cast that is broken down, that might form a granular cast. Epithelial casts are exactly what you would think. They occur in the setting of tubular damage, such as acute tubular necrosis. So it's just tubular cells that are literally sloughing into the urine. Bacterial and yeast casts, as you would expect, occur in the setting of infection, and fatty casts occur in nephrotic syndrome. But none of these have anything to do with cast nephropathy, and that's what we're interested in today. Cast nephropathy occurs in myeloma and is the result of light chains meeting up with TAM and forming light chain casts. So let's unpack that in a little more detail. Myeloma is cancer of plasma cells, and plasma cells are cells in the bone marrow that make antibodies. So they're kind of little antibody factories. And myeloma is cancer of these antibody factories. So you get lots of antibodies being produced and chucked out into the bloodstream. And antibodies look a little bit like this. They have heavy chains and light chains. Now, in health, light chains are produced constantly and broken down all the time. And the usual place for light chain breakdown is the proximal tubule in the nephron. So light chains are very small, they are freely filtered, and they enter the proximal tubule. The proximal tubule has specific mechanisms in place to take in light chains from the filtrate, chomp them up, and get rid of them. So the proximal tubule takes in the light chains, breaks them down into amino acids, and returns these amino acids to the bloodstream. This is entirely normal, it causes no problems at all, the proximal tubule is very happy to do this. 
But in myeloma, light chains can damage the nephron and they can do this in a number of ways. Firstly, they can deposit in the glomerulus, either as light chain deposition disease, or if they change their shape and become fibrils, they can form amyloid deposits in the glomerulus. In the tubules, they can also cause dysfunction. So say you have a lot of light chains and the proximal tubule is taking up those light chains and trying to destroy them like it normally does. But this can cause toxicity within the proximal tubule cells and disrupt their normal function. And proximal tubule dysfunction can lead to renal tubular acidosis and or Fanconi syndrome. And lastly, if the proximal tubule becomes saturated and overwhelmed so that there are just too many light chains for it to handle, some of these light chains will make their way into the distal tubule and in doing so can lead to cast nephropathy. And it's worthwhile noting that when you send off a Bence Jones protein as part of your myeloma screen, what you're actually doing is testing for light chains in the urine. So in cast nephropathy, The proximal tubule can't take up all the light chains. Light chains gain access to the distal nephron, where they'll come into contact with Tam. Now, light chains love Tam. They love him, love him. And the combination of Tam and light chains results in a light chain cast. And these casts clog up the nephron. They cause obstruction and attract inflammation. And cast nephropathy can be a very nasty cause of acute kidney injury. Very often these patients are extremely close to dialysis or on dialysis very quickly. It's very destructive. And formation of these light chain casts can be enhanced by high concentrations of electrolytes in the urine. So having a high concentration of sodium, chloride or calcium in the urine can enhance the precipitation of TAM, but also enhance cast formation. And acidic urine can do the same thing. And you may have heard the concept that frismide can worsen cast nephropathy. And that's because frismide blocks the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter in the loop of Henle. This transporter would normally pump across sodium and chloride into the interstitium to help with our countercurrent mechanisms. But if you block this transporter, you're not putting as much sodium and chloride into the interstitium and instead that sodium and chloride is staying right there in the tubular lumen. And we said before that high concentrations of electrolytes in the tubular lumen tend to enhance cast formation. And so that's how frismide can potentially aggravate cast nephropathy. So that was a quick tutorial on CAS and CAS nephropathy. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped your studies and I hope to see you again soon for some more high yield learning. Bye.